Hi, welcome to John Box Watercolor. Today, we're gonna to be talking about depth and how three easy tips can help add this effect to your painting. As always, if you wouldn't mind giving this video a thumbs up, it really helps the channel out and helps get this content out to more people. If you really like what you see, consider subscribing. So, let's get painting. All right, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and put our reference photo over on the right-hand side, just so you can take a quick peek. This scene is from Hungary. It's a really cool scene. We've got these towers in the background, some foliage, kind of a, um, a building sort of running vertically or horizontally, I should say, on the left side to kind of lead us into the picture. It's a really cool scene. I'm looking forward to painting it. As I mentioned, today is all about how we can create depth in our paintings and three easy ways to help you out. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Now I'm going to be mixing something cool for our sky here. I've got a little cobalt blue. I'm using my Raphael Soft Aqua. This is my large mop brush. This is a size eight. So this is this is pretty large, um, but it's really good for doing these these kind of sky washes. And we're going to just work just kind of stroke by stroke down the page here. Now you'll see in my other videos, I, I often mix up the ways that I, I sort of lay these skies down. You'll see me a lot of the time just putting some water all over the page and then kind of coming back and adding watercolor. But if you wanna get sort of a very smooth, sort of seamlessly transitioning sky, something that might not have a whole lot of clouds or anything like that. It's really nice to just work it sort of stroke by stroke. And as you work down the page, the watercolor and gravity will start to pull the color down and it really, really creates a, a smooth wash. It can also help you maintain light as well, just because as I mentioned, the gravity and water will kind of pull the pigment down as we work. Now, as I get closer to our skyline here, I want to be darkening things up and I may even warm it up a little bit, maybe a little red there, kind of get a, a purpley color just to help give us a little bit of a, an atmospheric effect. And you got to remember as well, it, it looks strong when you first put it on the paper, but you will hardly be able to recognize that we've actually done anything there. So, all right, finishing up our sky here. We're moving down into the figures and the road area here. Most of this is gonna be painted on our, our second and third washes. So I'm okay with going over it or, or bringing our sky wash over the top. That's not something I'm gonna worry about. Let's work on our street here. I'm going to work from the bottom up. <clears throat> I'm going to keep this a bit more neutral. Grab a little burnt sienna. And a good tip for if you're trying to neutralize your color is just look at your wash. And if it looks cool, add a warm color. If it looks too warm, add a cool color. And you'll typically end up with, with something that is a bit more, a bit more on the gray side of things. Let me just rearrange that a little bit. All right, let's just keep working there. I want to have the bottom of this darker than the top. And so I'm just grabbing some, some water here. Let's go underneath these cars. And I'm going to grab a warmer color for what's in here. And as always, you want to leave some white areas. Help us create accents. I typically like to have my car's windshields be left um, with the white of the paper. It just helps give a really nice contrast because the bodies are going to be so dark. It just really makes them pop. One thing I want to do, I want to darken up my road here on the bottom of the paper. I'm just grabbing some neutral tint and neutral gray. And we're just going to brush that down there. All right, I think this looks nice. We're gonna let this dry and then we're gonna come back, start our second wash, and that's where we're gonna start getting into how do we create depth and, and what, are, what are the tips for doing that. All right, we're back and we're ready to start working on our second wash here. 
Now let's do, I'm going to make a, mix up something a little bit thicker here. We've got these really, really nice towers in the back there. I'm, I'm excited to paint those. But in order to get them to contrast against that sky, I've got to mix up something a little bit darker here. And I'm going to keep it just on the cooler side. It should help keep them pushed back a little bit. So let's, let's make a mark. I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to just wet the paper just slightly. All right. Now, anytime you've got an object that's sort of protruding up into the sky, you do want to be careful with the lines you're making because really their entire purpose is to create that contrast. And I'm, I'm known as a, as a looser painter, but I, I will take my time in these situations where it's really one line that's going to be surrounded by light or our sky here. And I, I want to make the proportions. I, I want to have everything be a bit more thought out here. All right, we've got that little bit of a cooler roof kind of bleeding down into the gray. I think that, I think that looks nice. I'm going to move back down into the body of the building here. I'm going to warm everything back up. And this is going to bring us into our first tip on how we can add depth to our paintings. And my first tip is going to be that with objects that are further away, we want to utilize soft and lost edges. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that. We've got this building here, and I'm just looking at the body right now, just trying to make sure I've got a decent tone. I may need to darken it up. I talk about this a lot, but you need to, any corrections you want to make, you need to do them while it's still wet. So I'm trying to think about adding depth, but I'm also just touching a few areas. Okay, so... This tower I want to keep pretty sharp, but I want to create the illusion of, of depth off the side of this building. And there are two ways we can do that. One is with one of my all-time favorite tools, the paper towel. What you can do is just take and drag it through your building there. And what it will do is it'll create sort of these areas of, of um, it almost looks like light is coming across the shape. But... I think a better alternative, and it does take a little practice, is just to take some pure water and just kind of smear it in there. And what it'll do is it'll just start to soften up edges in a few places. And we're going to come over here and we're going to do the same thing. I think our paint needs to be a little bit darker to get that impression that we're looking for here. Let's do this one. And anytime you use a warmer color, typically that will pull the object forward. But what's nice is if we've already got that kind of wet area, we can just let our, our whatever shape we're working on just bleed into it like down here. And I'm going to need to add some more water there to get it even softer. Okay, we're going for a little bit of a darker roof here. I'm going to cool it off. Perfect. I'm going to darken this roof as well. Just like that. I think that looks very nice. All right. Now you see we've kind of got this, this pooling here. I also, I need to darken these shapes up. They're not getting the impression I want. There's not enough of a difference between the soft edge and the hard edge. And so I need to add just a bit of paint there. Let's pull that down. All right, now let's try this again. Let's get our water here. 
I'm just gonna kind of float it on there a little bit. But the goal here is almost to create a sort of haze. We're gonna come in with our paper towel and just touch those areas, right? Objects that are, are dark are always gonna come forward in our painting and those that are light will be pushed back a little bit. And as you can see here, we start to create this kind of a mist for the objects that are, are back in our picture. Now I've got this building on the left. I want to throw in a bit of a stronger roof for this building. All right, maybe something like that. And again, what's nice is we're gonna get that bleeding effect up into our towers. Now, <clears throat> I want to get darker as I move down towards the base of these. And by using a warmer color, it should pull it forward, right? Things that are warm and things that are darker will help move our image forward. I'm gonna be careful. I'm gonna paint around most of my figures here. Just using those soft edges again. See how when I, I dip my brush up there, it just creates this wonderful softness back there. And that's what's gonna help create a little bit of that depth. All right. Let's see here. Went with something really warm here. And we're gonna use those soft edges again here momentarily. What I'm gonna do, grab a little water, just kind of smear it into the area and then I'm gonna take my paper towel and just dab in there a little bit. I just want to lighten up that, that kind of line. Again, really giving us the idea that we've got some distance here. I'm going to strengthen up this roof line a little bit. And we'll dab it out a little there. All right, that looks very nice. I'm going to get just a bit of a cleaner shape around these vehicles. It's perfect. I'm going to soften that up as well. Again, just in general, when you've got things that are further away, your lines have got to be softer. That's, that's really the big tip we're going for here. One thing I am going to do while this is still wet, I'm going to grab some dark paint just add a few little details there. Just something like that. Okay, let's let this dry and we're gonna come back, start working on our figures, our cars, and start adding some details in as well. All right, here we are, ready to start our third wash. This is now completely dry, and we're gonna we're gonna get going here. So, tip number two is gonna be layering our darks. And what I mean by that is, when we paint, we typically have a first wash, second wash, third, or however many it takes. Watercolor is typically done in washes, and by layering our washes, putting darks on top of light it helps pull those objects forward. So I'm gonna create a tree line here just on the kind of back side of this roof here. And you're gonna see how those darks start to pull the object forward. I gotta be careful here. I wanna keep this, this line very, very clean there. And I'm just using a, a warm color 
I'm gonna do the same thing here. Now, if you haven't seen my video on, on painting foliage, um, you can check that on my, my content. I've got a whole thing set up on, on how we paint trees. But by layering these darks on top of some objects that we've already painted, it automatically pulls them forward and we start to get that impression of depth. I do it all the time with my figures and it, it's, it's something that you may already do, but it's uh, not something you sort of actively think about, but it's extremely, extremely important. I'm gonna add some more foliage there, another tree. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing with our figures here. By, by getting thicker paint and darker paint, it's gonna help pull all of these objects forward. So I've got some people in the shadows here, and I'm gonna to start to just layer this onto them. I'm just dry brushing most of this in. All right, let's grab this. And put a jacket on that figure. And I'm just gonna just touch a few areas back in there where we've maybe got some more people. Let's grab my smaller brush, which is falling underneath my palette here. Let's grab some neutral tint and start to put some legs on some of these folks. But you can see by really going dark there, it's helped pull that individual forward a lot in the scene. And you start to get this, this vision of being close, a little bit further away, and then furthest away. And we can do that by just simply changing our, our thickness of paint and the darkness of paint. I say thickness because really it doesn't always have to be necessarily that it's 100% darker because see there that that paint is lighter than what's behind it but it's it's thicker and so it kind of creates this this layering effect. It's very effective. A lot of times I'll see beginners where they don't necessarily layer their paintings. They sort of We'll paint one area and then they'll leave the rest of it the white of the paper and they'll come back and paint that but when they try to paint it darker it doesn't always work because they need that layering of pigments watercolor is by nature a very um thin paint and so if you don't have those layers built up over time you're you're not going to get that look that you're going for all right let's do this here Again, I'm kind of using an, an older brush and sort of mushing it into the paper. I'm trying to get just some broken edges and things, and that's less to do with creating depth and more with just creating an interesting impressionistic figure. Maybe have this person kind of walking across the street there. All right, let's maybe grab a little bit of that white paint as well and just put something there. I didn't like the face on that guy, so we're gonna, we're gonna redo that. Something like that, perfect. All right, here, we've got some good looking figures, got some stuff started. Let's work on our cars. Same principle here. I'm going to be going for really, really thick paint. That's that's really important. I'm going to use a cleaner brush here. We've got to have those layers built up. Do that. It's a little bit boring. I'm keeping them both yellow, but I always just like that yellow ochre for a, a taxi cab look. I think it, it ends up looking nice. All right, as always, we start off with our color and then we add something dark as we move towards the base of the car. Although I'm gonna add a little color back to these guys. That dark was a little overpowering. We can add our tires. All right, I don't really know which way I want this, this shadow to go yet. I'm, well, 
I guess they're going to go to the right. We'll do something like that. I'm going to go ahead and work a few shadows in here. I'm just going to draw some vertical lines there. Again, you see how those darks have just pulled everything forward. It's really powerful and it's it's one of the biggest mistakes I see beginners make is they just are afraid to use that dark pigment. I'm going to throw in some tail lights on here and, and just let those run. Grab a little bit of that dark paint and pull it through the center there. Again, I'm layering my paint here. I'm going to add some vertical lines on top of those, those dark trees we had painted. Again, bringing them forward. And by bringing them forward, it just automatically pushes things backwards, which is, which is what we're going for. Now, I want to add... Let's see. I'm going to get some lavender out if I can. I want to add like a... Maybe a ball cap on this, on that figure there. If I can, I need to get that paint a little bit thicker. Yeah, do something like that. That looks nice. It'll look really good when we add those those gouache highlights to it. All right, let's see. What else do I want to do? I still think these figures need to be stronger here in one big trick for doing that i i often have trouble getting thick paint out of my my palette there and so i'm going to go straight into i've got my bag of paints here i'm going to go directly in and find a tube of what i'm looking for i want to do some chinese white i think oh, that's interesting i can't find it did i pull that out well, I might not be doing any Chinese white. Here, we'll pick something different. Let's do, I don't know. Let's do yellow ochre. The reason is I just want to get some thick paint out there. I'm going to take some yellow ochre here. And let's just, I'm going to throw it on this guy's jacket there and just get it really bright. Look at that. It's such a fun thing to do, and it just pulls them forward in the painting. I'm telling you, it is unbelievably powerful. All right. Let me get my palette knife here. I scratched something there. Mm. I wish I would have used that yellow ochre somewhere else. I don't know if I like it on this figure very much, but eh, you know what? I think it's fine. Let's do... just want to brighten the faces on a few of these people. Again, just with a little bit of that thicker paint there. All right. Okay, let's let this dry and then we're going to add our kind of final details and gouache and we'll go over my last tip for creating that depth. All right, we're back and we're going to finish this painting up. The last tip I have for you is something that we've been doing as we've been working through this painting, but I'm going to sort of illustrate it more here on the final step. And that is you have to be willing to lose details into the distance. And what I mean by that is I'm going to start dry brushing in some windows and things on our, our building here. And something I find is that I will see a lot of beginners taking this same pigment, this same level of darkness, if you will, and applying it to buildings in the distance. And that really ends up creating a very flat image. 
our eyes in general just don't work like that. Images and details are going to become softer and lighter as they get into the distance. And so one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cool down this mixture here, but I'm also going to use a lot less paint. I might dip in this and start rubbing it into another pail just to lighten it up. I, I do wanna create some kind of darkness there, but it's gotta be much, much, much lighter than what is up front here. Something like that. And your, your details need to be less prominent as well. So I'll add a roof line there, add a roof line, just to suggest so the viewer knows that there's something going on back there. But I'm not gonna start adding a whole bunch of little details. I'll erase this, but what I'll see a lot of beginners doing is they'll do these windows here, right? We've got these nice, beautiful, dark, dark windows. And they'll come back here and they'll start doing this. They'll start adding all these windows here. But look how strange that looks. You've got this, the same darkness as those, and it just, it, it looks out of place. It, it doesn't work. And so you've got to be willing to understand where there needs to be detail, right? I want to have a dark roof line on this building, the one that's very close. The stuff in the back, I could really care less. Even on this same building, the ones that go further off into the distance, the windows that are further away, I need to be cognizant of that and let those lighten up. When I'm creating windows and roof lines on towers and things in the distance, it's almost just like the shadow of a window. And that's, that's all it needs to be. Now I'm gonna take this and maybe do just like a, kind of a, a light or something there, light post. I'll do another one here. And again, this comes back to our principle of layering our darks, right? Creating these shapes on top of um, washes that we've already done. And yeah, I, I think this looks nice. Let's grab our gouache here and we're gonna add some highlights. We're gonna sign this. We're gonna talk about things. All right. Let's do, as always, this is my white titanium gouache. If you don't have some, I highly recommend getting some because it just, I mean, it makes, it makes your characters, your little objects and things just pop off the page. It's, it's really, really neat. The first time you use it, you're going to be like, wow, that is what I could have been painting this whole time. So if you don't have it, go out and get some. You will not be disappointed. All right. I'll just add maybe a vertical line here. And this is the same, the same principle applies to your gouache as your, your darks when you're adding details. I'm not gonna grab this and, and go and add a highlight on a window back here. I'll, I'll erase this, but if you do something like this, it immediately pulls that window closer into the scene. And again, when we're trying to create depth, we need that variation there. And even that looks fine. Maybe I'll darken it just a touch because I lightened it. But <clears throat> let's see, what else do I want to do? Oh, you know what? I had envisioned a dog when I was painting this right next to this fella here. So I'm gonna grab, we're gonna make a little dog real quick. I'm just gonna make a smudge. And we're gonna make a, a tail. It's a pretty long tail. Um, and then we're just gonna pull down, pull down some legs here. Something like that. That is not the best dog I've ever done. I will tell you that, but that's okay. That is okay. And then we're going to give it a little shadow. There we go. Perfect. And one more thing. Again, this kind of goes to the whole adding details to things that are up close. We're going to add some perspective lines here. 
And that's another easy thing you can do to add some, some depth and kind of pull your, your viewer in. All right, let's see, is there anything else I wanna do? There's lots of things I wanna do, but I don't know when to stop. I'm gonna try one thing here. I just wanna start, give just a little bit of a roof line there. Just a highlight on the roof line. I think that looks nice. Okay, let's sign it and let's talk about it. Overall, I think that the painting turned out pretty well. Let's see if we can get a good signature. If you've been watching my other videos, you'll know that this, this brush is on its last legs. All right, that looks good. Let's peel it off, reveal the final piece. Um, let's talk about what I don't like first. Hmm, I think I would have liked this car to be a little bit bigger here. Um, you want to talk about adding depth, varying the size of your figures within your scene will automatically do that. I see a lot of beginners where they have this, they're doing a cityscape, they'll have this roadway or this crosswalk, and all the figures will be the same size. And you've got to leave room to have some little tiny figures in the back, some little cars and big cars. I would have liked to pull this up. And then instead of using the yellow ochre on that figure, I should have put some on this taxi. When I pulled it out of the tube, I was really impressed with how bright it was, and that would have looked really nice right there. Our, our taxi kind of just got too dark, so I should have used that paint there. I think our figures look nice. Really like this guy up front. Cars look fine. Trees look fine. Overall, uh, very pleased with the painting, but just to kind of go over our what we went over in this video. So our three tips are... Number one, we want to use soft edges for objects that are in the distance. We really softened up the edges of this building down here and lightened up kind of this sort of street horizon. We did that by taking a brush, putting a little water there, and then just taking our paper towel and kind of dabbing it out. Our second tip is layering our, our washes and layering our darks. So we've got our dark figures here kind of layered on the washes behind them. By pulling them forward, it automatically kind of pushes the other buildings back. And then our third tip is really to sort of ignore detail in the distance, right? We've got these buildings here. You can see it's a dark roof and a light body, but I didn't come in and draw windows and lines and people looking out of the windows. Ignore it. The scene is up here. You've got to let those things fade back into the distance. So if you stayed with me to the end, I really appreciate it. If you like this work, all my works are for sale in my store, the link for which is in the description. Um, as always, I really appreciate you visiting the channel and remember to keep on painting. Thanks.